credit? What about debt? Today, ladies and gentlemen, I got $20,000 in credit, well actually $22,000. I'm gonna break down how I got approved for this, all the steps that it took, why I'm getting debt, because God knows Dave Ramsey. Thousands and thousands of millionaires. I've never met one that said, you know, Dave, I made my money with my airline miles. Oh, those Discover points broke me through financially. Hey, let's do the math, okay? You know how you get $1,000 back from Discover? You spend 100000 how does spending a hundred thousand to get a thousand back ever make you rich? Where did you take your math class? Does not agree at all. Uh, but I'm not here to argue with Dame Ramsey. I'm not here to argue whether debt is good or bad. I'm just going to show you the process that I'm going through, uh, how I got this much credit, and if you wanted to do something similar, if you live here in Canada or the U.S., I imagine the variables might be slightly different, but somewhat the same nonetheless. But let's jump <laughs> right into this. Passive income investors alike today. I got approved for twenty. That well, twenty-two thousand dollars in credit. Oh my goodness! Uh, Dave Ramsey, not proud with me. A lot of you are probably cringing inside, like, why leverage? Uh, but I'm gonna tell you, just so you are fully aware, that this money cost me nothing. And what do I mean by it cost me nothing? Well, literally, these accounts cost zero dollars yearly. There's no changing in that. And if it does change, I can close the accounts. The fact of the matter is, this twenty-two thousand dollars. It's gonna be sitting there whether I use it or not. I just have access to it if I need it. So you're probably thinking to yourself then, well, why would, well, they're giving you free debt. Well, not free debt, I'm paying interest, which was what we're gonna go over in a sec here, what kind of interest rates that I got. But the reason I'm gonna, I'll break down by the end of this video exactly why I'm getting this debt, what I'm gonna be utilizing it for. Many of you already know, if you're new here, you probably don't know, but this debt is only gonna be used for business purposes, whether I'm purchasing a business or buying a piece of real estate or building my line of credit. This is how I'm gonna do it. But, I'm sorry, I'm pretty uh, hyped up today if you guys can't tell. We're gonna go over the entire process it took for me to get this debt, so you guys can uh, copy this if you wish to do this as well. I'm in Canada, so it might vary from the US because I use the Royal Bank. I am also with Scotiabank already with one of the worst credit cards and the worst fees I think out there. I literally talked to three different banks to realize the Royal Bank is the way to go. Now the first thing you're gonna have to do, guys, before you do anything, you gotta prove your income. Now I've learned it doesn't matter if you have a thousand dollar credit card at 20%, this does not actually help your credit as much as people make it out like it is. What it does is it gives you the same credit that a phone bill does, because we all take phones out on debt. You don't think about it, but it's in your phone bill and you probably don't own your phone either. So your phone bill's probably 80 or 120 bucks a month, let's be real. But that phone bill just proves to them that you can pay somebody back. But because it's not a lot of money, they don't really give a crap. And then it comes down to your income. So they're going to have to get what are called T1 slips, which you can't get from the CRA. CRA stands for Canadian Revenue Agency. I can't get it from them, uh, which I spent hoops and hurdles getting a hold of them to find out that I couldn't get it from them. Your accountant actually holds on to those documents. They give you copies of them, but your accountant should have full copies. And I had to go through two different accounts because you have to show two years of income, guys. And here's the sad part. It's 2017. I didn't make a lot of money. I only showed that I made $9,000 in income. <laughs> you need to show tiers of decent income, guys. My second year, 2018, so last year I made about, uh, I claimed $30,000 after taxes. So I claimed about $40,000, pay ten dollars in taxes, which was annoying. And I've learned how to defer that. If you're new to this channel, maybe you should subscribe because I can teach you ways of deferring your income. But forget that. In the meantime, I've showed $30,000 for last year. And then came the issues because they wanted me to prove at least two years in a row that I was making at least $20,000 a year. And they look at the big picture as well. They look at my car, uh, some other banks don't, but the Royal Bank specifically looks at my car, whether I own my car and I do own my car, it's worth about seven or 8,000. They also looked at the last six months of my account deposits, and I've had over $30,000 funded through my accounts. So they really liked seeing that, which led to what I thought was gonna be $7,500. No, 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 they're gonna give me $22,000 and 20,000 on a line of credit. Now. A line of credit is what you want, not a credit card like this. A line of credit essentially allows you to build credit and lowering an interest rate. So you're not gonna be paying 20%. I'm currently paying 10.4%. And all of the documents uh, that show you exactly what the fee structures are are right here because essentially on the $20,000, the prime rate is 6.45%. That's the actual rate. And then they're gonna charge you a 3.95% just for the agreement and brings you to 10%. 0.4% annually is what I would have to pay if I took out that 20,000 with minimum payments 
monthly. But the fact of the matter is I can draw cash off this. I can do whatever I want with this without getting extra fees to an extent. I can't do that with this. Now, something else that happened, you're probably thinking, well, how did I get 22,000? Why am I talking about an extra 2,000? Well, get this. This card is worth $1,000 and it's what I use to get cash back one to 2% on certain purchases. I'm sure, you've, I'm sure you've heard of these credit cards. Scotiabank charges me to use this credit card. The Royal Bank right now is not charging me to use the same exact credit card with the same fee structure. So this second line of credit is absolutely amazing, guys, because now I have the same card that I can use for my expenses. So sometime this year, I'm gonna be canceling this visa that I'm currently using because it technically is trash to me now that it's costing me an annual fee. And the way I looked at it was the money I get back on cash back every year is about 150 to 200. And I've been using that to cover my bank fees, but now I'm gonna be saving an extra 60 a year just by using their card. With free account comes a lot of rules and regulations. I can't pull money out of the account. I can only do it once a month and I can't do it through an ATM. I'd have to do it through a teller. They have a lot of specifications on how I pull money out of the savings account that I have attached to this credit. And I can't change that at any time and start paying the monthly fees that are like 15 bucks or something like that. But for the meantime, I just want them in basically free accounts. So I can fund the savings account and I can also withdraw against uh, this credit following their stipulations. But the fact of the matter is, as well, it sits here and I'm not using it, it's costing me zero dollars which is absolutely beautiful. So essentially, once you've shown your income, guys, and you can prove at least that you've made $20,000 or you have a decent line of assets, and they also wanna see some of your expenses, like are you living at home, uh, which I am, which is probably another reason that they gave me good credit. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, this is how the process starts. And uh, just to get your feet wet, you're gonna have to go through all the pains and headaches of doing these meetings and finding the paperwork. But once you get to this point, guys, I think you're in a very good situation because unlike Dave Ramsey and unlike uh, debt addicts that have to spend money they don't make or don't have, I'm only using this for business related expenses. If you are new to this channel, you might know me uh, if you've been around for a little while, but if you're new, I look for passive income sources. And sometimes those sources might generate enough income that it's not worth me putting all of my money into the deal. And essentially what I mean by that, well, let's take bigger companies, for example, like Apple, Disney, Microsoft, um, pretty much any company under the sun. Name one company that doesn't have debt. There's very few of them. Um, but a lot of companies manage debt and it's what is called good debt because the debt cash flows more than it would cost their own money being in the deal. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, this is so overwhelming. And it is. Uh, it's a lot of work to understand this stuff, guys. Um, so I don't know how else I can simplify it for you. But good debt, guys, good debt is putting it into something that goes up in value, not like a car. As soon as you buy a car with debt, it goes down in value. And some people even get negative equity in their cars because their debt is worth more than the value of the vehicle. Whereas if you bought a house, you'd be using bank debt to buy a house. But a house property value goes up over time, and especially if you're renting it. So you're making enough money to pay the debt and pay yourself a decent uh, a decent return every year. And at that point, it's considered good debt because you're making money while not giving all of your money into the deal. You're getting somebody to come in with you. Now, this is challenging to manage. It takes a lot of intelligence, patience, and time. So this is something you have to build into over time. I don't recommend rushing this. I'm just shocked that I got approved for $22,000 because usually uh, last time I went in, the one bank wouldn't give me anything. And then the other bank said, we might, no guarantees, we might be able to get you 7,500. And then they asked me how much credit do I want? I said anything I can get because I'm trying to build a line of credit, build some ratings, maybe get a house one day. And they're like, okay, well, here's 20 grand, go nuts. And I'm like, baller, all right, thank you. And then I was shooting guns off as I was walking into the sunset. Uh, not really, cause I don't like debt that much. <laughs> Well, you're probably asking yourself, why? Why am I doing all this incredible amount of work? Because one day I want to get a piece of property. I need a piece of real estate because real estate makes you wealthy and you can defer your income from paying taxes on any cash flow you make. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can utilize the, the real estate. Uh, and it's what I've learned time and time again. I just talked recently about REITs. Um, when you're investing into... Uh, basically your tax haven accounts or the government accounts, your registered accounts, tax free savings accounts, whatever you're using to buy stocks. Um, those kind of accounts don't give you the same benefits that a piece of real estate does. For instance, you can't leverage and you don't want a mortgage into uh, stocks. You just don't because there's way too many stipulations and rules. Um, and this is something that I learned from talking to this gentleman at the Royal Bank as well. I was thinking about going through um, a private mortgage, which essentially means some guy is willing to sell you the house privately at a custom 
talked about interest rate in a private contract. Now, the Royal Bank told me that you do not want to do that. You can. He's like, there's nothing wrong with it if you find the right deal. But he says, the problem is, is that we've gotten too comfortable with debt. He's like, we haven't been in a recession lately. And he just said, when you get into private deals with people, you don't know. And he's like, you want to look into those people's lives because if those people are stressing themselves with debt and they're using, uh, selling these uh, mortgages privately just to get a little bit more money and say the economy goes bust, uh, you might run into a lot of issues. Not that the economy goes bust, but things slow down. We end into another recession. So he says, do everything you can to try and get A rated credit. Because if you get A-rated credit, it's the best credit you're going to get. It's going to be the lowest interest rate. And if the economy crashes well, the banks are at least backed by the government uh, and the uh, and basically our uh, Canadian Treasury. So it's all backed just in case to a certain extent. And plus the banks are doing what are called loan loss provisions. So unlike in the U.S., Canada woke up, especially the banks, and they said, look, a lot of people are shorting our companies. They think this and this and this is going to happen. So why don't we just comfort them a little bit and we're going to start putting money aside in case we start getting an excess and defaults, which is just intelligent because it's not what they did in the U.S., um, those are the processes and those are the steps that I'm trying to do to build some income. Now, whether I use this or not, maybe I'll buy an online business is something I've talked about as well. I'm just trying to find any form of income that would be passive, that would be worth using this credit for. I might use it. Um, I don't know. I'm sitting on the sidelines right now. And what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to do another meeting with the bank. Uh, and on Friday to sit down and see what kind of mortgage I could get approved for. And if I can't get approved for a mortgage, then what are the steps that are going to be required to see if I can um, basically get rated for a mortgage. And then aside from that, I'm going to open up another trading account, another non-registered trading account in the Royal Bank account, because what I want to start using is a separate account to diversify the banks that I'm using because Scotiabank charges a lot of fees. And so far, I'm learning the Royal Bank is one of the best banks to utilize here in Canada. This was a lot to go over. I'm sorry guys if I've been overwhelming you today. It's been busy, a lot of meetings, been running around with my head chopped off going through all this. Um, I don't know if it's worth showing you guys all the paperwork here, um, but you can literally look all of this up on the Royal Bank if you want to do something uh, similar. But I suggest sitting down with multiple banks, seeing what your options are because to take one answer isn't good enough guys. You're going to want to ask around. And I've been learning a lot of this from you guys. Uh, thanks to you guys, a lot of this has happened. So since the beginning of starting this YouTube channel, I have opened up multiple accounts, RSP. I've got a little bit into ETF trading, but mind you, uh, the ETF trading I'm doing is in an RSP and I'm going to use that RSP to defer income today, but I will have to draw against that, which means I'm going to be pulling my income out of my RSP to buy a house tax free. Um, but I, it, that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. Uh, I talk about it a lot, but what I'm going to do is a full video breaking all of this down at some point in the near distant future. Sorry, I haven't had time to update the portfolio today. Uh, maybe I'll show you a screenshot of it right now just to show you guys what is going on with the uh, six-figure account as it uh, drifts back and forth because I think a lot of the stocks are down today, but I'm pretty confident they're going to be doing well. I've been arguing on stock twit forums. If you guys can join me there, uh, you usually find me posting once in a while arguing with people about my stocks uh, that I own, especially ones that are in political uh, dilemmas right now, but we'll get into that at the moment. But let me know if you guys know anything else uh, that might help me in the comment section below or, or might benefit the community. I do appreciate your advice. Your advice has led me down the road I'm going down and literally the amount of money I'm saving is equivalent to twenty or $30,000 doing what I am doing right now today. It is fascinating, guys, and I hope you're learning something. So stay cool. If you did learn something, slap a like because apparently the algorithm seems to enjoy it. But anyways, stay cool. Stay awesome. I look forward to chatting to you real soon.